All right, uh, let, let's get this uh, show going. So I already have the, the micro as uh, ISO image prepared, uh, which you can get from get.opencc.org. Uh, flash it to a USB pen drive and uh, you're good to go. Uh, just like you would do with Tumble with or Leap or with any other distribution really out there. Uh, you start the installation and uh, we'll get this baby going. So once everything started, uh, you will land in the traditional YAS installer. So there is really not much uh, difference here. You have the license agreement, which you need to agree with, blah, blah, blah. You just press next. Um, the, the whole installer is not different, uh, well, at all, really. Uh, it's different in the steps. Uh, as, as you will notice fairly quickly. Uh, so we get to the system role really fast. Uh, it's not asking for activating online repositories, which basically means that if you activate that, uh, you will install everything uh, from the online repos, which is not super helpful for uh, people who are uh, using metered connections and so uh, and stuff like that. So uh, we end up with the system role. Uh, from which you can select what do you uh, want to use micro s for. So this is uh, this video is about the desktop, so we're going to go for GNOME. There is also Plasma. However, Plasma has uh, haven't seen much of uh, much activity. Uh, it's or at least it's very slow, so it's not really recommended. Uh, as you can see, uh, even GNOME is still in beta. So. Uh, we're going to go uh, with the uh, GNOME beta uh, uh, username, uh, just like uh, usual. Uh, going to go with the Thor. Going to give it a super secure password. You guess that? Um, yep. I'm going to give the same super secure password. Uh, you really shouldn't do that though. Yep. And that was it. So you can see that uh, the, the micro S installer was uh, cutting a lot of corners. So it doesn't really take you through uh, of some of the steps, uh, like setting your time zone or doing the partitioning or activating the online repos, uh, repos as I mentioned before. Uh, reason for this, so partitioning, it's really not recommended to change it. However, you can. Uh, Basic rule here is don't change uh, the the volume structure. You really don't want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> it can cause uh, quite some issues, quite some problems. So try and avoid it. Uh, what you can do is, uh, for example, if you uh, want to uh, you want to add uh, encryption, uh, you are able to do so. Uh, you are able to encrypt your disk or add additional uh, uh, disks uh, if, if you have any, uh, which will be picked up and used for either for your home or for war. Uh, here you will be able to, to change those things. I'm not going to do any of this really. I'm just going to go with the defaults, uh, which in general is, uh, is, is the recommendation to go with. Um, I'm not even going to do anything here. Um, Software-wise, you can select uh, packages which are available on the media what you're installing it from. Yet again, uh, there is no uh, online repositories. I'm going to change the time zone and set it to Jakarta. Yeah, that's correct. Wow, have you seen that? Um, uh, another very important thing here. Uh, when you land in MicroS desktop, you will have no uh, just uh, installed at all. So basically, uh, what you end up with is an OpenSUSE system without Yast. So if you're a hardcore OpenSUSE user, you know what Yast is, you love Yast because Yast is, is great, uh, which is indeed great. Uh, <coughs> you're not going to have that. So what you want to do is take very good care of this summary and make sure that you pre-configure your system as best as you can. So, for instance, me personally, I, I don't even use Yast for anything. I use the Yast installer to pre-configure all of my systems. Um, other than that, 
I, I, I don't know why would I open or, or use Yoast uh, on a desktop. Um, generally speaking, Yoast is a server administrator's tool. It has nothing to do on the desktop and uh, MicroS, uh, rightfully so, uh, removed that and doesn't install it. Uh, also, it's probably not compatible with uh, with uh, any mutable system such as MicroS. So here, if you have uh, network configurations, you want to set up Wicked, you want to set up Wi-Fi, uh, whatever it is, you, you have full access to it, you should do so, uh, you are encouraged to do so, <laughs> otherwise you're not going to have access to this. Same goes for grub settings, boot settings, uh, security settings. Uh, important to mention that firewalls uh, are not included in MicroS by default uh, as, as it is geared towards uh, uh, container-based uh, uh, loads. So <coughs> firewalls, generally speaking, they can cause issues uh, with, uh, with the networking of container systems. Uh, but uh, yeah, technically, if you really, really want one, you could install Firewall D by yourself. You didn't hear that from me, and it's definitely not a supported use case. There we go. Uh, with this, you're ready. Uh, you just press install as you would for Leaport number with, and the system gets uh, ready, takes care of the partitioning, and starts installing, installing roughly 1,500, maybe 2,000 packages. Uh, 1000 packages and we're gonna wait so with the installation done uh, we are back to square one uh, I did not remove uh, my disk uh, so I'm going to hit a hard enter here uh, the system is installed um, ready to go uh, uh, from Grub, you are able to uh, right away start on a read-only snapshot uh, in case you have any issues. I only have one, uh, which is the current one. Um, so what I'm going to do is just hit open to micro OS. The first boot might be a bit longer. Uh, it's uh, doing a couple of things in the in the back. Uh, I forget to mention this uh, during the installer, but it is using SLinux. Linux. Uh, which is awesome. Uh, it's a it's a great improvement in security uh, when it comes to uh, containers, and uh, generally, uh, SC Linux is just uh, capable to do a lot more than uh, AppArmor, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, it might I might be wrong on this. It's just an educated guess, uh, but it's probably doing some labeling, some SC Linux uh, related things, uh, some system related things basically it's getting you ready so first boot uh, it's going to be a little bit longer uh, but it's well worth the wait here we go uh, we are ready to log in uh, oh, it's not that long off we go any minute so uh, this micro zest of first boot is uh, what's really interesting. Uh, basically, what happens here is that it starts installing a bunch of applications. Uh, keep in mind, you have to have an active uh, internet connection for this uh, because it's basically installing Flatpak applications. So Firefox, get it, that, that kind of stuff. So all of these things are happening now in the user uh, space. Uh, it's not going to be system-wide as far as I know, uh, which is awesome. So you are getting uh, all these applications uh, getting ready right now, so you're able to get started. So these applications are, yet again, flatback, so your system is not going to get cluttered uh, by RPM packages. Uh, this also takes some time, depending on your uh, internet connection, um, couple minutes max. Uh, but again, let's just wait it out. All right, uh, with the uh, little application finished, uh, let's check out what's happened here. So let's bring up a terminal. Uh, before I do that, uh, let's do something about the display settings, shall we? Uh, let's just change this up a bit. Uh, yep. Oh yeah, that, that should do. A lot better. Uh, while we're at tweaking, let's uh, change the appearance as well. 
of the terminal. Very good. Um, okay, so let's just uh, list out the applications, uh, if I can type. Close enough. There we go. So, as you can see, uh, all of these are user applications. Uh, such as the calculator, text editor, and uh, Firefox. So these are fairly handy uh, tools, uh, what we uh, kind of need to, to get off the ground, especially in the web browser. Um, so what did we cover so far is basically uh, a quick getting started, uh, getting the installation running, um, getting uh, the system to set up, uh, for the first time, install some of the, the base uh, applications, what we would need. And uh, that pretty much covers the, the first system launch. And we're going to continue it from here uh, with installing applications, getting to know uh, transactional updates, uh, how do you install applications, how is this whole thing works really. And uh, yeah, see you there.